When they first found petroleum, Rockefeller happened to be the smartest man in the business at the time. So in order to get the price up, they hit on the idea that they would have to make it appear to be scarce. In 1892, there was a convention in Geneva of scientists to determine what organic substances are. So at this Geneva convention, Rockefeller took advantage of sending some scientists over who said oil, petroleum, is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Therefore, it must be derived from the spoiling, the rotting of formerly living matter. And uh, playing the game properly, when the this scientific convention was over, they defined oil as a, a residue from formerly living matter. It's called fossil fuel for the minds of the public to feel that it is an asset that is running out. Professor Kucherov, a scientist who claims through laboratory tests the existence of abiotic oil. Well, that will be something. You, as a scientist, uh, proclaimed and even proved a completely different theory about the existence of oil. Well, according to our, I would say, controversial point of view, hydrocarbons is the product of our planet. They are generating on the depths, in, on the depths of uh, roughly 100, 200 kilometers, then migrates into the earth crust and uh, form oil and gas deposits. So we could say that this is a, a blood of our planet. How did we prove this concept? We make experiments. We have a very developed high pressure equipment at my mother university, Gupkin State Russian University of Oil and Gas. I try to explain it very simple. This is a surface of, of the Earth. This is a depth of roughly 100 kilometers. This is a crust of the Earth. Below 100 kilometers there are donors of carbon and hydrogen. We add in this mixture ferromoxide and put this mixture in the capsule, pressurize it and rise the temperature. Then in the end we have a mixture of hydrocarbons in distribution of at least natural gas methane, ethane, propane and butane. The mixture of these hydrocarbons from this depth to the crust could be moved via deep channels to oil or natural gas deposit. There are no doubts that hydrocarbons and natural gas particularly could be generated in astonosphere of our planet on the depths of 100 to 100 kilometers. So then you should you saying that it is infinite as well. Yes, indeed. That the world is producing it over and over again. Yes. But I, I do hear stories that, that oil fields are running running out and they're closing the oil fields because there is no oil anymore. People take oil very quickly and if we will come back to this oil field in 50, 60 years, we could see that new oil came to these oil fields. There are a lot of samples, for instance, in Romashkina oil field in Russia, in different oil fields in Russian Caucasus. After a certain time, new oil came in old oil fields, and this oil could be only from the depths. We use oil crude oil 
to produce most of the fuel which we use for our vehicles and heating equipment. According to very known calculation, we do use only 15% of oil produced uh, every year. 15%. We don't need to find new oil fields or gas fields. We don't need to accelerate oil and gas production. We just need to increase the efficiency of the processes which we used in for our civilization. The amount of hydrocarbons in, in deposits, it's not a problem. The problem is how do we use oil and natural gas? But that's huge. What you're saying is that we we could live in balance and in peace with oil and, and, and uh, w which saves us millions of, of dollars. It, it would be economically and politically change the world on such a big scale, I can't imagine. Correct. And, and, and I mean, why I'm not reading and seeing this in the mainstream media? Your question is your answer.